most people think of NASA as looking up from Earth in the heavens or going out from Earth to explore space. And so we thought, why don't we turn that metaphor around and call it an Earth Observatory and give people a space-based perspective for looking back at the Earth. So I remember the day that we first published NASA's Earth Observatory website. It was April 29th, 1999, almost exactly 10 years ago. And it was just a thrill. There was a feeling of euphoria. We looked at what NASA had on the web and as far as Earth science was concerned, you know, what type of Earth imagery and information. And it was all very technical. So we wanted to provide a, um, a more easily accessible and sort of a prettier approach to, to showing what NASA had. Before we launched Terra, which at the time was called EOS AM1, a brilliant scientist by the name of Dr. Joram Kaufman approached me and, uh, exp and offered the idea that uh, most people don't know about this mission. A lot of the idea for the Earth Observatory was sort of playing off uh, of, a, of a metaphor that Joram would often use. He would speak of the Earth as if it were a middle-aged person, a patient that was just starting to show signs of physical health problems. And now, for the first time with the imminent launch of Terra, we were going to have a diagnostic device. He would often say, we're going to give the planet a checkup. We started thinking in terms of what if there could be a place online where we could do some sort of a near real-time readout from the satellites that gave vital sign indicators of the health of the planet. I study climate and I'm also very interested in extreme events, things like tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, snowfalls in some area, either warm temperatures or very cold temperatures. And the great thing about the Earth Observatory is I can go there and I can see recent satellite data of those specific events or episodes. So it provides immediate data of areas of interest to me and to a wide range of other people. I went home one Friday afternoon and there was really not a lot going on. There was this little tropical storm kind of going out around Florida and not much really exciting going on. And over the weekend, I got a phone call from a member of my family saying, did you hear about that hurricane? And I thought, oh dear, I'm missing something. So I went and logged into the MODIS rapid response system, which provides a lot of the satellite imagery to the Earth Observatory. And there's this giant, giant hurricane, like aimed dead center for New Orleans. So we stayed and, and worked very hard to get all the flood imagery out. At the end of the week, I got an email from somebody at NOAA and they were trying to assess the impact of the flooding and he said he'd been in New Orleans all week and he had not been able to get a good map or a good overview of the situation and he was delighted to come home and log on to the Earth Observatory and he saw the thing that he had been looking for all week, the overall view of what the impact of the hurricane had been on the Louisiana coast. Many people are using content from the site and don't even know it. It's begun to sort of intertwine with the, with the overall backdrop of communications about the Earth, of iconic imagery and representations of the Earth. The absolute best moment was when I bought my iPhone and I turned it on and one of my pictures is on the loading screen, uh, which was pretty cool. I think the images are very powerful because they make people think about the Earth in a different way. I'm a, on the faculty of the Oceanography Department at the Naval Academy. I teach a course in waves and tides and another one in uh, remote satellite, remote sensing. I use uh, image of the day all the time. I have students start off a class discussing an image of the day, discussing what satellite sensor produced the image, whether it was active or passive, and what we're learning about the Earth or ocean or atmosphere from that image. It's easier to visualize the very complex components of the Earth system if you have these real data from satellites that depict how our oceans work, how our atmosphere works, how the land works. And seeing them all come together, I think, makes these very difficult to visualize concepts much more concrete.
I get to see the whole earth every day and how many people can say that, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I really hope that people see what we do and it connects to them and that they, that they get some joy out of it. NASA has played just an amazingly important role in shaping our nation's and the world's identity of itself. We are a nation of explorers. We are a nation who fundamentally believes that the future should be better than it is today and that science and technology will play a role in that. I hope the one thing people learn from the Earth Observatory is that our Earth is a very beautiful and unique planet and we have a responsibility for taking care of it.